Greetings all, it's Gerald Clark with you on behalf of Seven Planet Broadcasting on January 9th, 2019. Um, for those who don't uh, know who I am, uh, well, I guess all these other people do know who I am, so it looks like I've, these are all the people that have visited my website all over the world. I uh, haven't looked at this in a long time, <clears throat> find it quite interesting uh, how many people there are, so... Anyway, um, you'd think I'd get more YouTube hits than what I get given this kind of penetration, right? <laughs> anyway, um, the reason I uh, wanted to come on with you today was I was kind of casually looking at the Lasco site, and this is from um, the NOAA tools, okay? <clears throat> and I had mistakenly called it C, uh, Lasco 1 and 2. It's actually Lasco C2 and C3, which I think are kind of the, the names that are used. Anyway, uh, was just playing these through and looking at them to see what's going on today. And uh, <clears throat> I noticed, uh, I, this is not the first time I've noticed a little uh, interruption in the videos, thinking to myself, what? what's causing that is that a blast from the sun that is suddenly hitting the instrument now my understanding is that the instrument is actually between the earth and the sun here let's go back a frame so right here the the sun would be centered on this circle okay well suddenly and you know <laughs> i can't really explain this parallax issue that happened here but here's the circle okay and there's the sun that got displaced, or the satellite, <clears throat> the satellite that has the instrument was suddenly <clears throat> misaligned with where it was focused. Uh, did an energy pulse cause that? I have no idea, but I found it quite interesting that the sun really looks like it's shooting out some uh, serious uh, energy out the sides here when this happened. And so this happened, uh, it looks like about 918, it's hard to see because it's red right there. But if I go to this one and bring it back right around the same time, this is there, okay. So suddenly you can see if, if this instrument, and I and somebody explained to me that this this is probably the arm that creates the uh, occlusion here so that you can have a dot in front of the sun the way that they do. And then the camera would be back on the on the satellite looking directly at the sun and the earth would be behind it. So the only way that um, this instrument could receive something like this is if the energy from the sun actually came toward the camera and probably, I don't know, hit it with an electron cloud or, or radiation in the solar wind, so much so that it messed with the electronics or something with the receiver. I'm not quite sure what would have caused this, but uh, anyway, that's uh, so let me go f backwards and then forward so you can see. Yeah. So it does look like there is something here, and, I, and if it was the arm, uh, they said they prop, they tried to mask it by making it a dark color so that it wouldn't interact with the light too much, but it looks like it's absorbing the light, making it look like a laser out here, and I think that might be a good explanation of what that is, because it, it's here again uh, two or three days in a row. So anyway, then we go forward a little bit, and you get this crazy pulse that looks like about 9, um, 15, I can't see exactly what that is. And then by 10.06, it's gone. So let's see on this one. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, by 10.10, 10, by 10, it's gone on this one. So I think it's the same event. So it, it affected both um, cameras pretty significant. It looks like the CBSI, doesn't it? That's what Krista said when she saw the thing. I was like, hmm, I could, huh? The all, or the all-seeing eye, yeah, so... Anyway, I just wanted to put this out for you and have you guys take a look. The other thing I was going to look at is the um, the solar wind. So let's go to our observations and see if I can find this one. Um, the uh, WSA uh, Enlil is the one I'm looking for. I could probably search for it and find it. There it is here. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the solar wind predictor. And this one, it says 114, so it must start on the 9th and then go like, five days in advance or something like that as a prediction to give you that all right so let's click on this one and get it to play <clears throat> so here's the earth which is the green dot 
and then you have the stereo A and stereo B and you can see the stereo A is here and stereo B is there. Well stereo means that with the two different views it can give you a, a stereoscopic view like this so it's probably looking back at the earth like that back at the earth like this like two pairs of eyes and then looking at the energy coming off the sun going this way that's what I was suspected it's doing and the result is uh, this is the top one is the plasma density of uh, the energy coming off the sun and then the bottom one is the radial velocity in kilometers per second so you can see it uh, <clears throat> It's, it's hitting the Earth at about, oh, here it looks like about 600 kilometers per second, right about there. Okay. And then if you look at the dot of the Earth, this is the energy coming and striking the Earth from the sun. And then over on the scale here, so basically if you see something, uh, a density that's getting higher than red possibly up into a uh, light color and gray then the it's pretty strong that's how i read that so this blue that we're seeing here is probably right down in this vicinity so it's pretty low density <clears throat> the same time over here the velo the radial velocity in kilometers per second if you were seeing this blue we're probably in the 3 to 400 range which is kind of what you're seeing as the speed here. So this one's measuring 400, 450, but maybe 500 there, and definitely 500 uh, kilometers per second here for stereo A. And stereo B is measuring something slightly different, even though it looks like they're somewhat correlated. Okay, so this velocity you can see out here is quite rapid, and at this point, uh, it's just striking the South Pole or the, the left side of the Earth, which I assume we're looking at the Earth from the top on this. So that would be the top view. Um, but it's quite interesting. You see the, the higher speed here is going above it, probably based on the Earth's magnetic field. But the southern pole, or the left, the left side of the Earth facing the sun, uh, is getting some of this very high speed energy coming in. So... I'd be curious to see what the impact is from the disturbance map for that. So maybe that's the last thing we'll look at. Let's go look at the disturbance map and to see what's happening with the geomagnetic flux on the Earth as a result of uh, <clears throat> these uh, the current solar winds and the impact. And in particular, if, if that uh, instrument were to receive a uh, Alaska or to receive direct energy, I think it would take a while before you would see it show up um, on the Earth. So let's go to this view right here and play this one and kind of just see what's happening. So this is the result of the magnetic perturbations over the globe that you would see on this scale in nano the change in magnetic flux. That's what B is in nanoteslas. Right? So it looks like the South Pole got a little more activity than up near the North. And you can see that here. But still, it's only in the low or the high 100 nanotesels. Let's stop it right there. That would be a good spot to look. Right back over in here, somewhere right about there, is 100 nanotesels. It doesn't look very strong. I don't see anything other than just yellow. So, So it looks like it was pretty consistent. And it somewhat agrees with looking at the solar winds and such. Uh, and I guess if we have time, we can go ahead and look at one last thing that's going on with the um, real-time solar winds, which I think is a pretty neat product that they offer you here. Let's see if we can find it. Mm, summary solar observations. Where's the experimental? Mm. Oh, here we go. Ace real-time solar wind. <clears throat> Okay, so I like to look at the magnetic field on this one to start. Um, it's interesting. So here's your mag. Uh, this is the uh, est. This is an estimated real-time solar wind starting on one nine, and I guess it goes to um, how many days? Oh, this is the time. Hmm. Okay, I guess it's just for one day. So let's 
take a look and see. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Got some pulses there. That's kind of interesting. The spike here in the um, <clears throat> estimated real time. So this is the EPAM electrons, and that's the electron proton alpha monitor. Alpha. Okay, and then let's go look at this one. Uh, nothing too much there. That's interesting. The last time I looked at this, we had this really, it was all full, and then there were these jump discontinuities based on the time. I thought that was very strange. Oh, let's look at over seven days again, see what the trend is. <clears throat> I think this is helpful. Okay, wow, these little patterns really show up even better now, these little vertical patterns of no information. Uh, you'd probably have to zero in one. Uh, a day and see if we can isolate. Let's try it for 24 hours and see if we can figure out what that is. Huh. It looks like there's a missing period here from 1 to 7 in 3 days. 8, 9, 10, 11 days. So we don't know what time that is actually right there, but you can see it's happening there. <clears throat> Alright, let's look back over seven days okay it looks confused okay there no there we go let's look at the magnetic field okay <clears throat> so those jump discontinuities seem directly correlated to the magnetic field that seems to be pulsing um, coming from the sun it seems uh, like it's giving giving these repetitive pulses by day now maybe that's when the instrument is not recording or something I'm not sure uh, I find it unusual, though. I'll be watching for that pattern to see if this continues to show up like this. Anyway, um, so that's all I really had to say for today. Uh, I guess the last um, thing I would say is, uh, for those of it that don't know, I'm having an event in March. Let's see if I can get back to my website. I guess uh, I guess not. And. Uh, Wanted to remind everyone that it's right around the corner. So for those that really want to come, uh, please uh, make your intentions known, and we'll uh, keep going forward with the plan. So we look forward to seeing you all there. This has been Gerald Clark at Seven Planet Broadcasting, and we'll talk to you guys soon.